I'm Mike Lesser with Farm Equipment uh, Magazine. I'm here with our, our friends, uh, equipment manufacturers from Nebraska, Dual Lift with the Hellbushes. I'm Jim Hellbush, uh, Dual Lift Manufacturing, Columbus, Nebraska. Ben Hellbush. David Hellbush. Tell us about what Dual Lift does. If you encapsulate what, what your role is in this uh, ag world, how would you describe that? To survive, <laughs> I think right now. Um, we, uh, we have several uh, divisions of our company. Uh, Main was agriculture. Uh, it's a turn of the running gears for the fertilizer industry, for ammonia tanks, liquid fertilizer tanks, and some dry fertilizer equipment. And then we also manufacture um, head hauler trailers, fuel hauling trailers, jump in any time, um, machines to roll up the spent bags on the green bagging industry. Um, we also have another part of our company, we manufacture a salt brine machine, it's called a brine maker. It takes rock salt and turns it into salt water, which is used by municipalities and state governments for anti-icing and de-icing highways. We also make traders that deliver that uh, solution to the highways. And uh, another part of our company that we manufacture over the road traders, all the way from small 10,000 pound traders up to 30, 40 ton semi traders and everything in between. We think of ourselves as the industry leader uh, as far as farm equipment, uh, trailering equipment. Um, we've had constant evolution inside our company. We started with fertilizer, like Jim mentioned, with uh, low boy trailers for anhydrous and, and liquid and tender trailers, nurse trailers, things like that. We were the ones that, that really refined that and took it from an old junky piece of farm equipment to something better, something that's high quality, something that lasts. We position ourselves as as the high quality and the gold standard in in our world. Uh, people are constantly chasing us, and we're constantly trying to stay ahead of them. So it's uh, it's fun. And it's a great position to be in. It can be frustrating at times when uh, you're the one being copied and you're the one that they're knocking off. But uh, I guess it's a, a compliment of sorts. But um, we we always strive to stay in that position to always be the one that has the next thing. David's in charge of the plant, so he's the one that drives the, the efficiency side of it and, and pushing the cost down. And okay. I started in 2007. Um, I started in the sales department, and then I moved into the manufacturing in 2010 and plant side of it. Okay. I guess my official title, I never said that, was a, a vice president of plant operations. Mm -hmm. Ben? Yeah, so I started uh, is August of 2006. I came back and worked in the sales department, inside sales Building calls and that stuff, and uh, um, gradually moved through the process. And believe it was 2012, I became vice president of sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of restructured the way our sales department looks and all that. And so we've got two guys that, that take care of both halves of the company. And yeah. uh, I do mostly mostly sales and general administration type stuff. And Jim. Tell me about the the history of, of Dual. If we go back, you're, you're, are you second generation and in, in your sons are third, is it? Yeah. Technically, uh, okay. I'll, I'll make a very long story short. 1943, my dad was a young man and he was scooping corn off of a wagon and he hurt his back. And the doctor said, lay on the living room floor till your back gets better, you know? So we thought there should be some way to get that corn off of that wagon without scooping it. So I qualify because we're not sure, but we think he was the first guy to invent the idea of taking cables and, a, and pulleys and a crank and lift a wagon box up off the running gear and let it run the back end. And he took the box off, put a complete scissors lift type thing in there and put it back on. And he did it in the back of our milk barn. Every milk mm -hmm. barn had a little little uh, mechanical area and he did that. And he sold it to a neighbor and a neighbor's neighbor and a neighbor's neighbor's neighbor and that kind of thing. But he, he was a farmer at heart. Mm -hmm. I remember going to bed as a little kid in the farmhouse. It was pitch black outside, but I could see the weld blowing across our farmyard mm -hmm. there in the back of the milk barn with the, the welding uh, flashes going. And, and so on. And then uh, uh, in 1952, he uh, brought on the uh, uh, irrig irrigation pipe trailer because irrigation pipe was very, very strong at the time. And uh, my sisters and I would sit on the four corners of a hay rack to hold the irrigation pipe on the hay rack and move it around. But we'd fall off. And the worst thing is the irrigation pipe got ruined. You know? <laughs> so, so he went and drove on our farm and kind of started all over and made a pipe trailer. And we were the first people in, uh, in our county to irrigate. Uh, mm. And we had a very good crop that year. Well, then the same story. The neighbor bought a pipe trailer, the neighbor's neighbor, and so on. 
And uh, it was all just, I don't want to be little, but kind of like a hobby for my dad. Okay. And uh, 1969, I graduated from the University of Nebraska. And uh, uh, I told my then wife-to-be, which is Connie, mm -hmm. that uh, I want to see if I can turn dad's hobby into a business. And I give myself three years. And if I can't do it in three years, I'll go back to my degree, which is uh, teaching drafting is what, what my degree was. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. The yeah. good Lord has blessed us tremendously. Uh, I'm not an engineer by design, by uh, education, but I did all our own designing to begin with in the early years. Um, now we've got five people that are engineering um, in our engineering department. And we've, as we added on, we added on a conference room and larger office space and engineering department and so on. And, and uh, so now I'm still heavily involved in design work, but those guys carry the load. I get the easy part. I can mm -hmm. tell them what to do and then they have to go do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we've evolved in that regard. But uh, what really helped us is that um, as a kid, working on our own farm equipment, I would say, why did that designer put that brace in the way so I got to take that brace off to get off this to fix that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we tried to, to design our stuff to make it user-friendly as easy as we can. And by the way, don't want to break down in the first place. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we have our, our roots of being a very high-quality product. So in 1946, um, the uh, wagon lifts were doing pretty decent. And the state of Nebraska came out and said, you know, you're not a farmer. You're a manufacturer, you have to have a name and stuff. Well, okay, you know, and so the story goes that my mom. The tax ID, right? Oh, yeah, that's what it came out. <laughs> the, the tax ID, the tax ID. Yeah. And uh, the story goes that mom and dad are on the kitchen table, and well, should we Columbus Manufacturing or Helvish Manufacturing? Well, well, what should we do? What should we be? And in 1946, uh, uh, tractors came out with hydraulics. And so uh, uh, dad took off the cables and, uh, and the pulleys and the crank, put on two hydraulic cylinders. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so my mom says, well, you use two cylinders, you lift it up, why don't you have to call yourself dual lift manufacturing? So that's mm -hmm. how we got our name. Mm -hmm. We don't make any lifts today, of course, but that's how we got our name in the first place. So thank you, that's yeah. kind of a neat story. So our name got to be known as a very high quality product. 1977, a guy from Wichita came in and said, you guys make really good equipment. Would you want to make ammonia wagons for these uh, for the Fairlight trailer business? I said, I don't have a clue what what it is. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. I said, well, bring, bring me something. So he brought me one that was built in Hereford, Texas. And it was, quite frankly, not very well built. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I said, What's, why is this pushing? And he said, well, he said, about every two or three times every year, Someone is killed on the highway because the the trailer and stuff like that breaks down. It's ammonia tank and it's a bullet. It's a bullet going 40 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And you'll hit an oncoming car, it kills people. And he said, there's so many competitors out there and they all copy each other so much that they've made them so cheap. We need somebody that builds a high quality product. And so I said, okay. And so I took that unit that he brought me and I got rid of the bad stuff. I enhanced the good stuff. and. And it came out that the product was about 25% more expensive in the marketplace than what they were. But um, this guy in Wichita said he thought he could make it go. And that's how we got in the food hmm. business in that regard. Would you say that's the defining moment in your history? Was that getting into well, that? Yeah. yeah well, I think, yeah, getting in the fertilizer trailer business, yeah, that moved us in that direction. And that became our flagship product line. And it still is today. Mm -hmm. It still is our main products that we make. I would say um, that is one of the defining moments. It took going mm -hmm. from somewhat of a production and somewhat of a job shop to, to making consistent product with the dealer network and, and, and taking it to the next level. And without that step, we're still a job shop in Little yeah. Nebraska doing whatever somebody asks us to do. I've got Thank several you. stories, but I'll just <laughs> tell you one about how do we get where we are, you know? And uh, it was in the mid eighties and we were trying to break into Kansas. We just couldn't get in there. There's a couple of big co-ops there back in those days if you had 10 co-ops and one their name, that was big. Now it's 30 or 40 or 50 even. But uh, we couldn't get in there. And I finally got this co-op to buy one for each store. And our color is dark blue. And our competitors are all red. All of them are all red. So we did that. So we go to the Wichita show, and uh, Ty and I do, and it was, uh, and I'm talking to people. We've got our equipment stack in there. And I'm talking to about four or five potential customers. And this guy comes up. And I turned in, he tapped me on the shoulder. 
need a huge seven foot tall Texan big old hat. And he said, pardon me, are you the, no, the that makes these things? I won't say what they do. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, yeah, he wouldn't even let me talk. He said, you know what you did to me? I've got a whole wall full of red parts. Now I have one blue trailer that I'm going to have parts for. And he just went random on. I said, you done? No, I'm not done yet. And he just kept ripping me. These guys were laughing because they knew who this guy yeah. was, you know. And uh, I said, are you done ripping me now? He said, oh, I'm done. I said, I'll tell you what I did. I said, you paid about 25% more than all the red ones, didn't you? From that one. He said, yeah, I did. I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. You come, you go down to the courthouse. You get a marriage license. And you marry my one blue one with any one of those brand new red ones. And you make him do the same thing all year. Then you come back here at this year, and if you if that wasn't the best, say three hundred dollars more, it cost you. I'll give you your money back, and you can keep the trailer. And you do that, and I said I sure will. And then we went on the show, hmm. and uh, so we're at the Des Moines show and the Fargo show, and because we're trying to build our new. Yeah. And here comes Wichita, and I totally forgot about this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, same story. I'm sitting around talking with a bunch of customers, and this guy tells me, you know, so what you're Oh, no. <laughs> he said, son, I'm here to say one thing and one thing only. I said, what's that? He said, crow tastes like, <laughs> and you can fill in that last yeah. four letter word, yep. start from this. You know? yeah. And so, he became my best advocate. And he was out of, out of Johnson, Kansas, Big Bull, Kansas, down there. Um, and it was, we won that company over, that, mm. that sold one each store. They were our best customer for many, many years. And uh, he would, we go to a show two, three years later, and he walked up and he said, don't listen to a blank and blank thing this young man says. Just buy his stuff. Because <laughs> it's good and he stands right. Yeah. And that's the best thing you can have. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, several stories. Good story. Like that, but yeah. but uh, that's a neat one.